Welcome to the Gem Revealed podcast, where together we discover your soulmate. This is a weekly series of powerful conversations with expert speakers, thought leaders, and relationship coaches talking through the victories and villains that weave their way into our most significant relationships. Please join me, Janine Moniz, founder of Gem Revealed Matchmaking, to learn the raw truth regarding the pitfalls and plateaus of dating in today's society. We will have open and transparent conversations surrounding the staggering facts that one out of every two marriages fail. Let's stop this insanity and learn how to date smarter. Learn how a healthy relationship starts with you. What do you need to do differently to build the right foundation for your relationship? Welcome listeners. Thank you for stopping by for another episode of Gem Reveal Podcast, where we talk about the plateaus and pitfalls of the relationship journey. And I am so excited today because I have a super cool guest with me. He's a newer friend of mine. Um, Dan and I met through social media. We met through a mutual friend of ours. Many of you know Tina through myself and and, uh, our love in sync and love at lunch little vignettes on Facebook. But through her, I had the privilege of meeting Dan. And let me tell you why that was so captivating for me. Dan is an influencer. I see him all over social media and he captures people's attention. And I have to share why. Dan's one of the few people, as I've got to know him more and more, he's somebody doing life different. So why am I going to say that? Because he's living out what he believes is his core values. And it's radical. And it's it's so aligned to who he is and the life that he wants to create for himself. So for me, for that's what I love to do. I love to be around that type of personality. He challenges you to be your better self. So it is just a no-brainer for me to really keep on his coattails to find out a little bit more about him. And through this newer friendship, we've had a lot of discussions about relationships dating, and so on and so forth. So it gives me an unbelievable, humble privilege to say, welcome, Dan Rawls. How are you today, Dan? Oh, I'm well. I was looking around wondering who you were talking about <laughs> as you were introducing somebody. I was, I was like, whoa, who's she talking about? So thank you for your kind compliments. Yeah, well, what, what, so just so we know that, you know, obviously there is, there's some validation and accuracy in that. Share a little bit about yourself. What makes you believe, what, what makes you think that I would even give you that kind of summary? What, what is it in you that you know that makes me kind of give you that kind of outline there? Well, I think about that word influencer a lot because you see it floating around a lot. A lot of people put it in their bio maybe on social media, LinkedIn, and their profile, if you will, they they put it in their adjectives, <coughs> excuse me, of their description of who they are and what they're about describing them. And you called me a an influencer on social media. And really, I'm more of an influencer on the phone and in person than I am on social media. Social media has just become a platform to reach people from my past and also maybe a new audience and a continued audience. But, you know, my definition of an influencer is, would you follow, would you follow that person? You know, would, do you believe enough in what they say and do they do what they say? I like the way that you just ended that. That's a super crystal clear outline of an influencer. And that certainly is you. And um, I I just want to, I'm going to throw out like, five or six, maybe even seven conversations that you and I have had. And just that that's how vast they've been. We've talked about, you know, one of our first conversations when we were on, uh, I was facilitating with Tina doing the, the speed dating, you kind of threw out to everybody, you know, I have really clear questions that I ask everybody before I even venture in. So we've had that conversation. We've talked about people's love languages. We've talked about how people are paranoid on Um, on online platform and dating. There's so many of these conversations that you and I have had, and you have this real clear vision on how to to navigate some of them. So my question first is, how is it that you're so clear on this? And then what are some of these topics that you would even dive into now, just to really help some of our listeners, men and women? 
Well, you know, it's just it's just an interesting world. So first of all, um, there's another there's two other words that I see floating out there a lot uh, that I think have been around a little bit longer than influencer. And uh, the first one is networker. And the second one is connector. Um, that's really who I am. I, I mean, for, for three decades in my career, I've, I've been networking um, for a quarter of a century plus. I've been connecting professionals professionally. That's what I do for a living. And um, so, you, so you have those three words, networker, connector, and influencer. And, you know, it, there's, there's a phrase I used to teach, um, a principle called like, know, and trust. No, K-N-O-W. You have to you have to like someone before you want to get to know them and you have to want to get to know them before you can trust them. And that's really in a business setting. You know, I'm not going to put my reputation on the line. Um, we call it the mother test. I'm not going to refer my mom to somebody um, that I've just met because if they screw it up, that's my mom. And that's going to be a poor reflection on me. And that happened to me numerous times earlier on in my career. And so, um, but the same thing holds true from a, personal standpoint, you know, that you, you know, you're not going to ask someone to marry you on the first one or two dates, most, most of the time. Um, and it's just a matter of like, no, and trust. And, you know, we, we live in a world because I read a lot. I pay attention to people's comments. Uh, I pay attention to people's posts that I have an interest in following them because they add value to me. They add value to their viewership and they add value to the world. And, there, there's so many people that are just confused. They're just, they're, they're just flat out confused. The walls are tall, the walls are thick, and the walls are deep. And so many people, they're, they're, they're just surrounded by the walls. They don't want to let people in. And so you said it earlier, how are you going to let people in? You know, if it's, if it's just a hey conversation or it's kind of like, it's kind of like in sales and business. If I meet someone at a business meeting, if I meet someone at a networking event, at a chamber event, at a trust integrity meeting. Um, you know, it doesn't happen at the higher end groups, but if I just meet someone at a networking event and they call me two or three days later and, or they send me a message, a text, and they're like, Hey, I just want to set an appointment. I'd love to jump on a zoom with you. They're in sales mode. I mean, clearly they're in sales mode. And then my wall doesn't go up. I kind of disarm them because I'm trained. I know how to do that because I've been doing it a long time. But a lot of people will just say no. And I'll ask them a few questions, you know, and you might want to write these down. One of them is the famous four words, just out of curiosity. And so I preface a lot of my conversations, be it business or be it personal, around those four words, Janine. Like it's that. like just out of curiosity if you were to move, where would you go next? Just out of curiosity, what are you looking for in this phase of life? Just out of curiosity, what is your purpose to want to jump on a Zoom with me? Here's my Calendly link. I didn't ask you for your, for your calendar link. I had someone message me just the other day and he's like, oh, hey, I met you in that mastermind group. I'd really love to jump on a Zoom with you. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what's your purpose? You're sending me your calendar link. I don't even know if I like you yet. Why, why do I want to schedule a Zoom with you and jump into a meeting with you, sir. I mean, you don't even know me. And, you know, he's like, well, you could help me. Okay, well, that sounds like that's a one-sided coin. So a lot of this applies to business, but a lot of it applies to personal too. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of wearing both hats here, if you will. So connect the dots for us. Cross, do a crossover. So I, I'm tracking with you completely, but do the crossover for us. How would you, how would you play that out in the, the relationship and dating world? Okay, so... You know, if you if you meet someone personally in my personal life, I'm very different. So I'm I'm very reserved. I'm shy, for lack of a better word. You keep and telling I just, me that. I've yet to meet that guy, but maybe yeah. I will one day. Yeah. Well, you'll see. So you you know, it's just it's there's a concept that I also learned a long time ago called needy is creepy, and there's a lot of salespeople and business people that come across needy, and that's kind of creepy to some people. And in the personal world, it's the same thing. You know, there's lots of both genders that do disrespectful things when they're meeting new people. And it's like, how do you how do you push through that? How do you start with the light phase? Hey, just out of curiosity, what are you looking for in a soulmate? Hey, just out of curiosity, 
what are two or three of your deal breakers? What are two, two or three of your um, non-negotiables? Right. So, so if, if you start with that, if you start with what are your non-negotiables rather than courting someone or having a conversation for two weeks or two months or however long you do, and then Oh, uh, what are your non-negotiables? Well, smoking or no, I can't relocate because I've got six kids in four schools and they're all under 20 and I'm not moving. So what are your non-negotiables? I think it's, I just like to get some of that out up, the, up front. All right. So that's actually, I was going to say, because we've had this conversation and I thought it was amazing. So when you either, if it's an online dating experience or a, you know, somebody who was a mutual friend, blind date, whatever it was, you're just meeting somebody, you're doing that, that kind of, curiosity checklist, that conversation right out of the gate. Am I correct on that? Right. So I, I, uh, I met someone and, uh, we, we met and then our second gathering, I'll call it. Um, I went to her house for dinner and awesome dinner. She told me her story. Amazing, amazing lady. And our third date, we were at a mutual, her, her friend's house, and we were just kind of listening to music after, um, after hours and a conversation with like six adult couples. And she asked me two questions. And she said, um, just out of the blue, she said, um, do you have a problem with the prenuptial agreement? Number one. And number two, are you a Christian? And you see, she asked the questions the way that I had no idea what she wanted the answer to be. And I wasn't going to answer her the way that I thought she would want to hear. I just answered, I gave her my answers. And um, then she smiled and she gave me a big hug and she says, okay, great, let's keep talking. And so some, some of my close inner circle friends think, whoa, that that's pretty direct. Like right off the bat when you first meet someone and because those were non-negotiables, her answers, the way she wanted those questions answered, those were non-negotiables for her. And to me, why not get that out in the open right up front? And so it's not about being direct. I think it's just rather than tiptoeing and wasting time, um, it's learning to tap into that up front. Um, I had a recent conversation, and if you follow me, you'll see a video that I recently made, just a short two-minute video about for those people that are in their mid to late 40s or 50s and older, we've really entered the third quarter of the game of life. And oftentimes the latter part of the fourth quarter is ailing parents. Maybe our health isn't hundred percent. Maybe we can't travel. Maybe athletically there's things we can't do tennis, skiing, whatever it is running that we once love to do. And people act like they're 20 when it comes to this process and you're really not. So what can you do to squeeze time to make it, how can you get to trust faster? Is that, that's the goal. That's what I'm saying. And so I think if you just throw out some questions, ask some transparent questions, you're going to go farther, faster, quicker, because if the answer is no, then it's no. I mean, as a female, what do you think about that? What if, um, what do you think about another female asking a male those two questions? Well, I, I think you and I have a ton of alignment here on this, right? And it's actually not only what I, I believe is a female, but I believe it's exactly what Gem Revealed stands for. It's doing that hard conversations up front. Maybe I shouldn't even use the word hard. Maybe it should be more, I like how you said it, doing the curiosity, right? First, knowing what is most important to me, right? Knowing what's important to me. What what lights me up? What's my purpose? And how does it align with the person I'm I'm interested in to really see if there is any future there and finding out what are those questions. You actually outlined five that, you know, maybe we'll figure out if we could purge them out of you to give up others, a, you know, a cheat sheet to, to glean off of, but getting out those, those questions up front, just so you know, you're not wasting time. That doesn't mean that it can't be a, a good friend along the way, but if there is an interest and a romantic interest is really understanding what is the, are we aligned? And then you brought up something else and I'd love you to dive into this one because again, I think the first conversation we ever had um, outside of that first event was then you just said right out of the gate without me prompting it, you said, well, you know, um, you know, most people don't even know their love language and there's those five love languages. And I, I was like, wow, I can't even believe that that's something again, that 
not many people understand that. So again, hooray for you. I just applaud that. So can you just tell us a little bit about that? I've spoke about it a lot through Gem Reveal, but hearing it from a gentleman, I just think it would be awesome. So tell us what you think about those five love languages. Most people don't even know what that is, so shape it up for me. Okay, so you're going to have to come back uh, the next step or before we finish is, is refresh my memory on the, the five questions. But as far as the love languages go, um, you know, it, it's a great book. Um, I think it's great information. Personally, I think um, had that book been written 20 years before it was, I think the divorce rate would probably be lower um, because more people would have known what they were getting into. And uh, anyway, just you can go Google the image. You don't have to read the book, but if you read the book or listen to the CD set, um, you'll grasp more information on it. But there's basically five different love languages. And so for me, if I'm talking to a woman and there's there's one love language, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but there's one that I just absolutely cannot meet at all. It's just not my skill set. It's not my strength. And so I just like, I'm just not your guy. I mean, it's just plain and simple. It's gifts. That's what it is. It's gifts. And so, um, you know, some, everybody has different love languages, but it's, it's, can your partner meet your needs in your love languages? You have your primary and your secondary. And um, there's, I'm sure there's tons of videos on it as well, but just get the CD set and listen to it in your car. I mean, it's just. Let's let's outline the the five. Um, It's, it's words of affirmation, um, quality time spent. Gifts. What are the the other two? Um, uh, uh, physical touch. Physical touch and uh, acts of service. That's right. So acts of service, quality time, physical touch, giving of gifts, and words of affirmation. So what you right. just so the, what we so just heard just, you say is Dan's never given gifts. So if I if I need you to give gifts and that's my top love language. You're not the guy because that's not the way I'm going to receive love from you. It's not that I never have. I'm just not good at it. It's just, it's just not my strength. And so I recently got introduced to somebody and I met up with a person for about 20 minutes, kind of in passing. It was kind of a fun conversation. She was a nice gal and she was, um, she was like, yeah, like PDA, Public display of affection, holding hands in a movie theater, like what, hugging in public, like I would never do that. And I'm like, I'm not your guy. Like, just, I'm not your guy. You know, really attractive gal. And I said, well, I, I know parts of it have worked for you because you have four kids. Um, but, you know, she was buried several times and it was just, I said, you know, it was like, it was no big deal, but it was like, I can't serve you in the way that you need to be served. And so... Um, I think that's an important dance that if, if yours is physical touch and quality time and you know, you can meet the needs of your partner in that way. I mean, I'm not the expert on the book. I would just say, go find the information, download it, listen to it, read it, whatever you want to do. But um, I think it's profound information. And so for me, Janine, I like to ask people up front, Hey, just out of curiosity, what are your top two main love languages? And If they don't know, I'll send them the image. There's an image, a picture, one picture, and it has the five love languages that you just verbalized. And I'll text that and they'll say, oh, well, this and this, okay? And then we can continue the conversation, right? And so if, if, uh, and some people don't really know what their love languages are. And I'm like, I'm not here to school you on that. Just go get educated on it. But I just like to preface it, hey, just out of curiosity. And so um, I, I think that that's a great icebreaker conversation. And like you, I mean, you're the, you're the most giddy woman about of anybody that I've talked to. You're like, oh my gosh, a man actually knows what that is. And I was like, why wouldn't I know what that is? So, uh, but it was just kind of funny how you just kind of segued into that. And I said, well, of course I know what that is. Like you have to know what yours are and what hers are. So anyway, if that helps you, because if, if you can dive into that, you'll know I mean, I'm just, I'm shocked. I mean, I just, you know, and everybody's different, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has a different belly button and a different sense of smell and taste and eyesight. Um, But it blows me away the number of women that I know, just clients, previous clients in my other business, friends, casual acquaintances, just people that I know socially 
just the number of women that tell me, oh, I, I knew in my first month or six months or my first year of marriage, it was never going to work. Like he, he had no, he's not a romantic guy. He had no interest in, in the physical romance part of a relationship. I was like, I'm scratching my head saying, how, how does, how does that happen? Like so I'm, stay there I'm, one sorry, minute. I'm missing that. I want to jump in right there for a minute. So all of this talk, you just landed somewhere. You just said something so important. I don't want to lose it. So what I just heard you say is, um, you know, as I've discovered, a lot of people come to you for just conversation and, and wisdom and knowledge nuggets. And here you're disclosing that so many people both find themselves in relationships that they, they knew it wasn't even going to work. But if we just did these few things up front, had the conversations with curiosity, finding out our core values, finding out what our purpose, finding out the alignment, and then the simplicity of saying, what's my love language? Go get the book, read the book. And having those conversations up front could stop you from hanging out with Dan and saying, I knew it wasn't going to work even a month in. So that's how important these, like, these are really important conversations. And I want to move forward because you, you are, you have so many videos that are out there right now that I always have the pleasure of waking up and you're up at the crack of dawn. So there's always a video by Dan somewhere out there. And I've seen one that I thought was really great. And I know we're closing in on time, but um, a conversation we've had and a video I saw kind of bleeds into each other. You talked about a couple who were like all over the world, like one was on one side of the face of the earth and the other one was on the other face of the earth. And how somehow or another, their open-mindedness to finding love and finding romance and not letting the word no stop them. Like there's so many barriers we place in our own mind. That against a conversation you and I had about paranoia, even online dating. You know, what's the difference between online dating and networking? Yes, there's creepers out there. There are, but how do we, how do we minimize paranoia and then end up like this beautiful couple that I, you know, got to see a video of yours and, and we diminish the the paranoia and open up the world of yes. Tell us about that. Yeah. So that was actually in France in 2019. Um, You'll just have to go to my YouTube channel and just watch the video or message me and I'll send it to you, but it's just a little two minute video. And they tell their story. They lived 8,000 miles apart. And, um, you know, some people are worried if somebody lives two states away in the United States. I'm like, well, okay, let me just squash all that belief. You do crazy things for love, right? You Would you relocate? You know, are you relocatable? So, um, I mean, that's just the reality of it where people are. If, if you know the pool where you are and it's not happening for you where you are, then Enlarge in your pool, go to a different pool, like find a different, a bigger pool, find, get out of the fishbowl, go to the pool or go to the ocean, find a bigger place. Um, but it is a great video. And so, you know, I've just, I've just found the reality of it is, is rather than, you know, we're not in seventh grade throwing paper airplanes back and forth to each other. It's kind of like, you know, do you have an interest in what I'm doing? Do you have an interest in me? Whatever. And I just, I love sharing in those conversations um, because it, it helps people realize, well, maybe I need to change my approach. Hey, just out of curiosity, if what you're doing isn't working, what's one or two things you think you might want to change that could work better for you? Find out what's working for other people and do that. That helps. Love that. So um, last little nugget. And just because I just, again, I thought it was captivating and it was when I really, the first video I ever watched, it was just so spontaneous and really didn't even have um, an underneath thought, a fully formed thought, but yet you turned it into something that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll even put it in um, the, the, the link to it. It was a sock video, the, 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 the whole sock thing. So people are just probably like, what are she, where is she going with a sock? So tell us that. And then I'm going to ask you to just close with some, um, so maybe some encouragement or maybe action steps for our listeners, but tell what's the sock thing. Well, you got to watch the video. It's better experience than explained. I can't, you're not going to throw out a no, you're not going to throw out a teaser, no teaser. It's, it was totally off the cuff. I mean, it was just a, a just totally completely Maybe, off the cuff. I'm going to go with you. I think you're right. Maybe I'm just going to tell everybody that's where I said that I had a warm spot in my life for Dan after watching the sock video. So I will put that in the link. But then if we were to um, really think about this, Dan, you're, you're living life large, right? 
you're you're doing life different than most. I, I you haven't really brought it up, but you you live out on a, a boat. Um, then you move uh, half the year through. So you you are somebody who strikes me as living some a life that you're designing on purpose that's aligned to your core values and you're not going to settle. I think that in and of itself is amazing. That qualifies you in my world to say, what are some things that you would share with listeners, men, maybe um, females? What would you say to each of them that would one help them prepare their themselves for for love differently than they're doing now is there anything that would really hit you from what you've seen what you're experiencing in your relationships that you're navigating what would you tell our listeners well first of all your comments to me um or maybe i haven't even figured it out and that's why i'm doing what i'm doing because i haven't figured it out and i i kind of split time in two different places um but, you know, I've worked hard in my career to be able to, to do that. And I just, uh, I love the water in the summer and I love the snow and skiing and the snow in the winter, in the mountains. And it's just kind of a passion for mine. And I just, I love both. So I can't really have both. And no, I'm not moving to Lake Tahoe because your water's cold. So, um, but, you know, I think um, if, if what you're doing isn't working, probably change your approach, change what you're doing. and. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's interesting because if you're over 40, where do you go to meet people? I mean, that's, that's the struggle. I mean, people, I, I hear it all the time and there's, there's, I know lots of females, but I have no interest in dating probably 99.9% of them just because I don't, um, Why? nothing Why? bad. It's just, we're, we're friends. I mean, I, you know, I have female influence in my life that I can call them and ask them their advice on something. And it's just, it's just a gut feeling. And there's this word, you've said it, you've said it three times. You've said the word settling, settle or settling. Um, I think there's, there's a big difference. It's called shifting your mindset. To me, it's not settling. To me, it's being selective. So if you're selective on the front end and you're not even going to seek out someone in a certain arena, being selective is more specific than not settling. Being more specific. So if I just ask you, Janine, right up front, you know, hey, just out of curiosity, you know, having dinner, conversation, cup of coffee, and I say, hey, so looking for your forever, your person, your forever. What are a couple of deal breakers for you? What, what are a couple of just non-negotiables? What are a couple of desires? So here's a lady. Here's this is an interesting quick story. I met a lady that um, lives in Atlanta, super sharp gal. Her husband passed away years ago. So I asked her, I said, hey, I'm just kind of curious. What are you looking for in a man? She literally pulls out her phone and she had a list of characteristics. This is by memory. I can't even tell you there was at least 25 to 30 characteristics of her non-negotiables in a man. I was like, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a woman that knows exactly what she wants. I don't know if she's going to find that person that's going to fit all of those characteristics, you know, in the age range, midlife of where she is. But um, I certainly wish her the success with that. But you just, to me, that was vision that was just striking to me. I was like, wow, never. Most people can tell us what they don't want. Few people can tell us what they want. And I see that in business and in personal, but that, that blew me away. I was like, okay, that was the wrong person to ask that question to. And so but that's the reality. Most people spend more time planning their two-week vacation than their future or maybe looking for their soulmate or, you know, and I see so many people commenting on Facebook posts and social media posts and just they get caught up and I'm done with this. I'm going to be single the rest of my life or this or that. You know, personally, I believe that God didn't make, make it for us to be alone. And then there's the other comment that some people, Janine, they think, well, the longer someone has been single, the harder it is for them to be with someone because they're so set in their ways. Well, it's, it's, it's not about changing. It's about shifting and adapting. We've all had to pivot. If I hear that word one more time, but we've all had to <laughs> adapt and change and shift some of the things that we were doing, but, you know, focus on what you want, not what you don't want. And we've all been there. A lot of us focus on the things that we don't want. So that, that would be action steps. Start, start, some of your conversations with the curiosity question. Hey, just out of curiosity, are you relocatable? Hey, just out of curiosity, what attracted you to this? What attracted you to my profile? Hey, just out of curiosity, 
blah, blah, blah. And you fill in the blanks and you come up with your own questions, but that's kind of a softener that can help you to find out because the bottom line is if that person isn't willing to move, why would you even continue the conversation? I mean, it's just in your world. Yeah. But I didn't say, are you willing to move next Friday? I didn't say, let's pick out cakes for the rehearsal dinner and the wedding, you know, two months from now. I, I didn't say that. It's just like, would you be open to this? And so many people use the word travel. I love that one. People like, oh, my bucket list is I want to find someone to travel with. I want more stamps on my passport. Great. When you work a 60 hour a week job and you put in overtime, when are you going to find time to do that? So to, to me, if I, I'm not signing up for that, I'm, you know, personally, there's no disrespect, but I'm not signing up for someone that works 60 to 70 hours a week because they have no time for me. And I know what my two main love languages are, and that doesn't even fit in alignment with that. So if that helps your viewership, um, that would be my encouragement to you and your folks. I love it. I love it. I want to backtrack to the one part about that checklist. You know, I highly encourage that and talk about that often, that we should all have that, you know, I hate the word checklist, but have the vision for what is your non-negotiable. And although like you kind of laughed a little bit, 25 may, might be a little extreme. Um, I just recently sat down and took a hard look because I had never done it before. And when I wrote down, I came up with 10 and like purged it down even a little bit more. And I realized it's like there are seven non-negotiables for me. And that that is mind blowing when I really looked at it and then looked at my past to recognize, wow, there's a gap there. So I would also I just felt like the real need to say that there is so much power in that. So I encourage everybody to do that as we as we conclude, Dan, I mean, I could hang out and talk with you for hours. So um, I encourage everyone to go find Dan on social media and you know follow him. But as we conclude, Dan, um, you also you have a really cool uh, career with, uh, I think, trust integrity. I don't know if you want to close sharing anything, you know, as concise as possible about that and just tell our viewers how to maybe get in touch with you. Uh, I think that would be a great way to conclude as I just thank you for sharing all of your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Oh, kind of you. Thank you so much. So, so I do two things. Um, I've been in the health and nutrition field with the same company over three decades and uh, that's my passion is keeping people healthy, making a positive difference in their life. And, um, you know, I've weighed the same since high school, but I don't say that to brag. Um, I say that because um, it's about learning certain things about health and prevention. And our company culture is what we teach to share that with people. So um, I love that culture with Juice Plus. Um, just amazing. Um, the company helped grow me up fast in my early 20s. And that's um where I obtained really just a lot of my skills um, and leadership skills. And so also I've been running CEO and entrepreneur professional business groups for over 25 years. Um, I just have a passion for that. So you could call me a matchmaker in the business world, putting groups together that meet on a consistent basis. And um, trust Eggerty is for seasoned professionals, people that have been in their career or in business a certain length of time, so someone that's brand, brand new, um, unless it's really a second career for them, um, that's really not our target market. But if I, you know, find me, if I can help you at all, um, get better connected in the personal world and the business world. To me, it's kind of a both and because if someone's single, they can navigate their way, um, you know, to, to meet somebody amazing and it can come through the power of connections. I always tell people at meetings, in-person meetings, I say, be careful what you wish for because you might very well get it <laughs> if you make a verbal request. But um, trust integrity is an amazing culture and community where it's trust plus integrity is trust integrity. That's the name of our company. And we're, we're nationwide. We have groups all over uh, the world or the country and we're expanding globally as well. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited to, come and observe trust degree myself. So I, I know that's something I'm really looking forward to. So Dan, again, I'm just going to say a heartfelt thank you. Um, thank you on behalf of all the listeners. I would encourage everybody to reach out and connect with Dan because uh, you will, you will not be, uh, you, you won't be upset. And there's just so much to learn and grow along with Dan. So Dan, have an awesome rest of the day and thank you so much. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Gem Revealed's podcast, Discover Your Soulmate. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate, and review the show on your favorite podcast player. We really value your opinion, so please feel free to send us your question, comments, or feedback. You can email us at info at gemrevealed.com. You can also find out more about Gem Revealed services by visiting gemrevealed.com. I'll see you next time as we discover your soulmate.